Yeah. Alrighty, a savage back workout today to make some savage gains. Starting off, of course, with none other than the pull-up, the best back exercise, hands down. All right, no arguments here. Um, of course, it's, I'd say it's the best for width. Um, I like it more than a lat pull-down just because, you know, you've got to um, stabilise a lot more. It's probably more functional because of that. Um, so we started with two sets of overhand, just a regular width grip here. Um, we're doing them weighted. Um, if you can't do weighted pull-ups, that's fine, do body weight. And if you can't do body weight yet, do assisted. And if you can't do assisted, do some lat pull-down, mate. You know, very similar movement to motion. And this is the man, Daniel, my uh, workout partner, doing it. Getting those reps and making some gains, boy. When he first started, he could he could barely do like one or two pull-ups with any sort of good form. I mean, he'd be kipping, he'd be jumping, and he couldn't even get it. And here he is doing weighted pull-ups for reps in about a year of training. What an absolute beast. Look at that. Yeah. Straight gangster. <laughs> and a yep. full rep. Yeah, nice. Okay. So after those two sets, we did a third set, which was just a body weight now and a wide grip, really focusing on bringing that sternum up towards the bar. Rather than just thinking about your chin getting over, think about bringing your chest up to the bar. Um, it's a great plane of motion to go through and really just focusing on getting that width again. Um, wide grip, I'd say, is definitely a little bit more difficult, so we're not using the weight here as we don't want to get too exhausted because we still got a bit to go in this workout. Um, a lot of good content, a lot of good gains. And just one final push to get that last rep, to squeeze out that 1% more muscle gains. And I did it, yeah, yeah. And Dan the man doing the same stuff, getting it in, body weight, wide grip, lat gains, all kinds of strength. And now for our final set, we're going to switch to an underhand grip just to get a different sort of stimulus on the back. Um, just as many sort of different contractions as we can achieve. Um, this also will hit the biceps a bit more, being an underhand grip. A um, little bit more narrow as well. It's good squeeze. Dan the man rocking them out. But now you can't just do pull-ups if you want an awesome back. I mean, you can get awesome width and great arms, great biceps from just pull-ups alone. But we also want to do some sort of horizontal row. But before we did that, um, Dan was testing his strength and he pushed a whole tree out the ground. Oh, oh what? Holy shit, that's what one year of being on, on my program will do to you, son. All right, crazy. All right, and just, uh, we also do a little bit of push, which might surprise you, just only three sets of incline, not, not to failure, just like eight to 12 reps of a fairly easy weight, um, just cause it's good to stimulate a muscle group at least twice a week. So we have a main day where we hit chest on Friday or Saturday, and this is Tuesday workout, which is basically completely pull focused. Um, but we like to just do three sets of um, an incline press in there just to stimulate the chest a little bit. Nothing too savagery. No. And now to the horizontal pulls I was talking about. Now this is more for back thickness. Uh, we started with one set of an underhand barbell row. Um, a lot of people like to go more like leaning forward, more bent over than me. I like to kind of be a little bit upright. Um, you know, it feels better on my back that way. Uh, and also I still get a great squeeze, great contraction. And being more upright, it's actually gonna stimulate your traps a little bit more. And I think traps is a pretty cool muscle group to grow. Um, you want some mountain tops, mountain top peak traps, like Brock Lesnar. Um, that's pretty cool stuff. So yeah, we did one set of underhand each. Um, Arnold giving us some inspiration. Ah, come on. All right, and the man, Daniel, doing it, getting it in. And now with these rows, um, whether it's barbell or dumbbell, you really want to think about pulling in and squeezing with the elbows. So 
keep those elbows in nice and tight and think about you're pulling entirely from your elbows, squeezing that lower back. Um, especially with underhand, you're targeting your lower lats a lot more than with overhand, it's more of a um, little bit more rhomboids, a little bit more of a scapular rear delt kind of movement. Although of course you're still getting back, it's not quite as low as the underhand gets. And it's okay to just kind of throw these up and then just control the eccentric down. Um, same goes for the pull-ups. You know, explode up and then slow the eccentric down. And then we did two sets of bent over dumbbell rows. Um, not too heavy at the moment, got a little bit of a wrist injury, so I'm not gonna overdo it, but same rules apply. A little bit more of a slanted neutral grip here. Um, I, I get a great squeeze with this neutral grip. Um, and I also get a good rear delt hit, which is the posterior deltoid of the shoulder, right at the back. Um, if I had the initiative to do labels on this video, I would point that out, but for the sake of laziness, I'll just say it. Okay. And then my camera died right here. Uh, all spaces was done, so had to come back the next day and refilm. So we're gonna finish off the workout with, of course, rear delt bent over reverse dumbbell flies I don't know is that what they're called I can't remember but um anyway a rear delt movement with the dumbbells here uh you know very important to strengthen the rear delt uh, to avoid things like shoulder impingement and too much work on the um, front of the shoulder with all the pushing that we do you know it's good to get some of that reverse some pulling of the shoulder so we did uh with just one set to basically near failure. Um, and then straight after that first set of um, reverse dumbbell flies, red outs, uh, we went to the barbell curl. Da Arnold's favorite bicep exercise, the bicep curl. And yeah, we did those basically to failure, quite high rep. Um, we're not going heavy, as you can see. <laughs> uh, just like, you know, 25, 30 kind of slow reps. Controlled eccentric, explosive concentric. Remember the eccentric is the lengthening portion of the movement of the muscle, so the downward motion, that is the eccentric. And the squeeze, the shortening of the muscle, that's the concentric. You know, you can explode with energy on that, bang, and then slow it down. Yeah, and um, that'll be sure to strengthen those muscle fibers, mate. And then straight after, I think we, yeah, we did two sets of uh, barbell curl and then we finished with some rest pause read out. So basically we'd go near to failure or failure or near to failure um, and then have 10 seconds rest and then go straight back and do another set to failure, 10 seconds rest, another set to failure, 10 seconds rest, straight to failure. So it was a total of four little wee sets with a 10 second breather in between, basically. So here's me having my 10 second break, <laughs> panting like a, like a dog, an obese dog going for a run. And um, yeah, then back to it for my second set. I didn't film all of it just for the sake of time here. But yeah, that's a great way to really just stimulate the hell out of the red outs. Cause obviously you don't need to go heavy with red outs. Cause I mean, they're a smaller muscle you know, it's not a compound movement, um, the rear delt fly. It doesn't require, you know, all the big muscles like the chest, the lats, stuff like that. It's really just rear delt and trap. A little <laughs> bit of rhomboid too. <laughs> so that's the workout. We done. Good stuff. I'm off.